deal more damage, die less, be invited to a group, and more importantly, get the loot that you want, the achievement that you want. Being a better DPS is a constant process and most of us get stuck and start to overthink or approach it from the wrong angle. But there are five things that always seem to work for me when it comes to becoming a more competent player. This is where it all starts, with the spec of your choice. You can opt for playing a meta spec, which is sometimes the easiest way to choose a spec. Picking a meta spec requires no brain power on your part since other people have done all the heavy lifting, and this is not necessarily bad. It would actually be a smart choice to play something known to be able to perform to the level required. There are also other ways to pick the right spec. It goes back to knowing where you are as a player. I'm talking about your personal skill level, because this will impact your growth, but also the speed of your growth. Everyone has different skills and plays things differently, yet everyone can become a better DPS player and generally better player overall. Knowing where you stand helps you understand where you start and where you need to go. As an example, oftentimes I recommend people start with simple specs when they are first learning the game. Beast Mastery makes for an easy range DPS choice while Retribution Paladin does that for melee. When you choose a spec that requires less from you to be able to perform, you can then start to focus on learning mechanics and the content you want to strive in. I did this very thing back in BFA. I joined my first serious raiding guild as an elemental shaman back when elemental shaman was uh, a harder spec to play than today and I was also a significantly shittier player. Suffice to say, my performance was at most average for a heroic raider. The combination of the spec being difficult and me being a serious raider for the first time made it a big challenge to be able to perform as a DPS. So for the next raid, I decided to take a different approach and picked up Beast Mastery when BM was significantly significantly easier than it is today. Suffice to say, I did a lot better on BM. You might think that it was obvious I did better on an easier spec and that might be true, but I was still a much better BM player compared to all other BM players than I was an elemental shaman compared to all elementals. Not only that, I actually learned how to handle mechanics, how to position puddles and dodge beams. I became one of the best DPSers in my guild during heavy mechanical phases because I had the brain space to store everything I needed to do since BM didn't really take much brain space to begin with. After that tier, no matter what DPS I main, I was always one of the best players at mechanics where even if I started on 10th in the DPS meters, whenever the heavy mechanic phase would start on a boss, I would always consistently rise up on those meters compared to my peers. I attributed this, of course, to continued practice, but also to the fact that I prioritized long before learning fights and mechanics before optimizing my own DPS and eventually managed to do both. So that in Nathria, when I went back to my shaman enhancement this time, which was no picnic, mind you, my results were satisfying at the time. This is not a flex, I don't consider myself a great player, but I did achieve the goals I set for myself and always improved where I wanted to. The last criteria to picking the right spec is fun. You have to have fun and enjoy the spec you are playing because constant improving implies you'll face friction, stress and frustration since you will fuck up. If the spec itself is also a source of that, you are just making it harder for yourself to get better. Vice versa, if the spec is something you genuinely enjoy, then improving will come easier. Part of being a better DPS is knowing your class, studying your class and so on. But that's as boring of a tip as it is obvious. Instead, a more specific advice is to understand your spec. And I will tell you what that means. Over the years of me playing all the DPS specs in the game, changing mains every raid tier, I have come to realize that reading a guide or researching my spec isn't enough to make me the best I could be. It's necessary and helps, but there was always more to a spec. Something that people who played it for years know, and it can be either consciously or subconsciously. I won't talk about all the 26 something DPS specs individually since that's silly, also may take forever and last epoch is coming out, but instead we'll use Frost Decay as an example since it's a pretty simple spec to understand and most people think they know exactly everything that goes under the hood, just like I did when I first tried it out. The best way to understand how something works is to know what it is trying to achieve as a main goal. Big damage, yes, sure, very good, but that's true for everyone. 
You can approach this however you want, but I recommend using Archon, the baby child of Warcraft logs and sub creation. You might be thinking right now, Flame, but who's the mommy? And that's obviously Warcraft logs, since it took sub creation and everything it stood for, dissolved it and made something new out of it. Now the website is constantly changing, so not sure if you will see exactly what I see here, but when you go there, you want to check the meta builds, wherever that section is, and of course open the Frost DK version out. Here you get a super quick access to stuff like stats to get, talents to use for both raids and dungeons. This is mostly what you want to know first, so you can just go back into the game and play. Yeah, it sucks you have to do this with a third party website, but do you want to get better or not? Copy pasta your talents and stats so you know generally what gear to get, then you can start playing. To understand what Frost Decay does, we can start by checking the talent capstone. Obliteration clearly makes your frost strikes and howling blasts during pillar generate a guaranteed killing machine proc. Which if we know anything about frost decay, we know that it makes your blitz crit and is the biggest source of damage for your spec. Already this tells us that during pillar of frost we want to use our killing machines quick, then use one of the abilities above to generate a new one, rinse and repeat. This means that during pillar we don't want to press stuff like remorseless winter, chill streak, empower rune weapon and so on, since that's a global that won't generate a killing machine, hence losing DPS. And if you reverse that thinking, that means we want to press all of those buttons before our Pillar of Frost to buff it and make sure that during our key DPS window we just do what the cooldown wants us to do. If you understand that, you know what to focus on when you go do damage in a key or on a raid boss. Everything else complements this. If you search Pillar of Frost in the talent tree, you will notice all of these other talents that make it obvious where your damage is coming from. But you will also find Ice Cap, which tells you that the more you crit with Frost Strike and a Blit, the more pillars you will get. This sounds like you really want crit as a main stat, huh? Well, what did the stat priority say you want? Uh, crit Mastery. How about that? Stats usually change in Mythic Plus since constant AoE functions differently, where haste usually is better, but Mythic Plus is volatile and has enough room for error where it won't matter as much as it does for raids, unless you want a time of 29. And you can keep going like this with other talents if you wish, but at the very least what looking at a few did is tell us the goal is to crit as much as we can, to get as many pillars as we can, so we can do as much damage as we can with killing machines. And since Pillar of Frost with Obliterate as a tool for DPS is the biggest source of damage, then we want to make sure we always have runes for Obliteration and Death and Decays to cleave it if there are more targets around. Of course, you can find more nuanced information by going in the Acuris Discord, or reading the Wowhead and Icy Veins guides, or even watching Biceps videos, which are top notch. But something that takes you 10 to 15 minutes can tell you just the right amount of information on the spec that can often be lost in the weeds of unpacking pages of theory behind how Frost Decay works. After you learn your class, the next thing that a lot of people tend to ignore, myself included, is the content they play. To be a better DPS player, you need to know when the best time to do big damage is. When you can use your cooldowns the best and not have to interrupt your rotation. That's usually when the boss has fewer mechanics you need to do, or when the boss takes extra damage. Small run in the raid is a good example or the first boss of Everbloom. They both transition to a phase where they take extra damage. Depending on what type of cooldowns you have, you might want to use them here. Usually you don't want to keep them unused too long, long enough where you might end up losing a cast or two over the course of a fight. But this starts to get more complicated since you have to take into consideration the fight length and how many cooldowns you can fit in versus how many you would have if you just held them for your opportune time. Once again, this comes down to knowing the content you play. Some specs make it very easy to do this, specs like Red Paladin, which has a 1 minute cooldown on wings, while in raids, Execution Sentence and Wake of Ashes have 30 seconds, meaning that you always want to cast them regardless of what happens, so that you can always remain synced, otherwise you will likely start to hold them in order to sync them again, and this can lose a usage 
of them over the course of a boss fight. Taking this the other way, a more difficult example is Assassination Rogue in Mythic Plus. As a core cooldown pairing, you want to always use Vanish in the last 3 seconds of your Kingsbane with Deathmark to apply Garode and possibly Rupture. This way you get them to snapshot and increase your damage significantly as well as the damage of your last Kingsbane ticks. And you normally do this every 2 minutes, having Vanish always paired with Deathmark. In Mythic Plus, however, due to the nature of the content, you want to instead use Vanish in your opener to gain more bleed spreads through indiscriminate carnage. This will guarantee faster dots on more targets, more damage for specific talents that want you to put more bleeds out and get you to do a shorter burst window during King's Bane, which matches the content where mobs die faster and you not having the time to do your ideal rotation on one target. And knowing the content doesn't just resume to dishing out the most amount of damage. A better DPS is also someone who can and will use their crowd control abilities properly to prevent mobs from casting or to enable huge pulls. Stunning 10 to 15 mobs at once takes a massive load off of your tank, which still needs to survive through all of it. And speaking of surviving, being a better DPS and understanding the content means you use your defenses when you have to. Rogues have a short cooldown on Faint, which you should use all the time when soaking the group soak on Eridicron. Even use Cloak, if the dot is on you, to massively help your healer out. There are examples like this everywhere in the game and it all comes down to knowing the content you do to better get value out of your abilities. This is mostly a no-brainer, but being prepared can be overlooked. I actually did this after swapping to my Rogue. I was focused a lot on improving since Rogue is a new class for me to main and figured enchanting my belt, getting my weapon runes and crafting my embellishments are not as a good of a priority to have before learning to actually play properly. And maybe they're not, but once you start stacking more than one of these, they will add up. One boot enchant might not save you during a progress fight, but the boot enchant, cloak and bracers will add up their defensive stats and it can make a difference between a mechanic popping your cheat death or just taking you really low and saving your cheat death for a shittier situation. And since we are on the topic of Rogue, this also applies to more classes, but if you end up doing M plus keys, craft engineering bracers that can combat resurrect a dead ally. You will end up in party groups where you don't have a druid, warlock, DK or paladin to CR somebody. And you may have them, but they die, cause Rogue is usually tankier and dies last, so having this ability on you can offset a lot of situations that can be bad. Similar with Bloodlust Drums. Sure, it won't replace an actual bloodlust, or the CR bracers can malfunction sometimes, but most of the time it gives your party enough freedom to have a more diverse comp of classes and makes you a better DPS player by being able to take on more responsibilities for your group and not having to rely on other people as much, which we know in a pug world can often deplete a key since it's always everyone else's fault. The most obvious tip can always be the most overlooked and once again I am saying this out of my own experience peppered with arrogance. Since I normally play all specs for our YouTube content, at some point during the expansion I end up thinking I know what to do and know how to pilot a rotation. But it often happens that muscle memory can be lost or not have been there from the beginning. An easy way that you hear about a lot but don't see enough people doing it is training dummy practice. This also is closely tied to tip 1 in this video. Building muscle memory will first of all keep you more mechanically competent but also free up a lot of brain space so you don't have to think about your rotation during combat, making it easier to do mechanics, rotate your defensives, CR a dead party member with your engineering bracers and so on. Muscle memory can be built in actual dungeons and raids as well. If you play a lot, you will end up getting better. But it's not the same since during actual combat you have more things happening that can distract you, hence building specific good habits becomes harder. When you first learn how to drive a car, the instructor doesn't take you through midday traffic on day one. Same goes with playing WoW and learning other life skills. This can also help people stuck in competitive paralysis where they are actually afraid to do a dungeon or a raid since they fear they will fuck up. Just do it. Do the raid, do the dungeon and build up your skill by practicing. The more you think about it, the more complicated you make the process, the less likely you will improve. And to improve you need to play a spec that suits your needs and choosing a main gets easier with this video. Click it and check out a nerdy process on how to pick the right main for you.